What's good? It's Wug. We are covering the 2023 Grammy Awards. We're going category by category, or at least some of my favorite categories, including the four major awards. Those awards being Record of the Year, Album of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. And we are going to predict winners in terms of who we think will win in each category. And we're also going to pick our winners in terms of who you think is the most deserving or who you would like to see win the award. And in this video, we are going through Producer of the Year. This is, I wouldn't say one of the newer awards. This has been around since like the early 70s. The first recipient of this award was Tom Bell. Tom Bell actually just passed away less than a couple months ago, but he was producing for the Delphonics, the Stylistics, the Spinners. Tremendous career, some beautiful R&B and soul songs from like the early to mid 70s, even into late 70s. But the first time that this award was handed out in 1975, it went to Tom Bell. Now, if this was around a few years prior to that, he would have probably won more than one time in this category, like probably in 72 or 73. But he is the first recipient of the award. The third recipient was actually Stevie Wonder in 1977. That's when he was on this like five album classic run through the 70s. And this would have been around the time of uh, songs in the key of life. But Stevie Wonder was the third winner of this award. The most wins in this category's history have gone to Babyface. He was a four time winner of this award. And at second place with three wins, it's actually a three way tie between David Foster, he wrote like uh, Whitney Houston's I Have Nothing or Tony Braxton's Unbreak My Heart. He wrote Peter Cetera's Glory of Love. Even as far back as the 70s, he produced for the band Chicago. So David Foster has three wins in this category along with Quincy Jones and Pharrell Williams. And the most nominations in this category with 11 Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Like, think about that. 11 times nominated for Producer of the Year, and then a two way tie for number two in nominations, with seven, those two people being David Foster and Quincy Jones. The last winner of this award was Jack Antonoff. And I actually thought Jack Antonoff should have probably won this award at least once prior to last year's win. I mean, because he produced Lana Del Rey's Norman Effing Rockwell. He produced uh, Lord's Melodrama. He's also produced a ton of uh, Taylor Swift in the past. He produced like the, uh, the album Lover, for instance. He didn't do most of Folklore, but he did do Lover. And he was like a part of the band Fun. So he did We Are Young. That was like one of his first breakthroughs. And he also goes by bleachers when he's operating as an artist rather than just a producer. But if you look at his like laundry list of hits, this guy has produced a lot of quality music for several very noteworthy artists. So he is the reigning winner in this category. And he's actually also nominated this year. He's one of five nominees. The other four being Dan Arbach of the Black Keys, Boy Wanda, who first had his big breakthrough with Drake's Best I Ever Had, like now, what, 14, 15 years ago? Uh, Dahi, who used to go by DJ Dahi, he's done a lot of stuff for Kendrick Lamar, and he uh, had a lot of production on Kendrick Lamar's latest album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And then the fifth nominee is Durnce Emil, or D-Mile. He just produced like the entire album for Lucky Day called Candy Drip. He produced a uh, Grammy-nominated song by Mary J. Blige called Good Morning Gorgeous, and he produced the entire project for Silk Sonic, that Grammy award-winning collaboration between Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. Yeah, d Mile produced that an evening with Silk Sonic album. And quite frankly, each one of these five uh, nominees obviously produce a lot of good music over the years. So it's like, how do you then pick your winner? You know, Boy Wonder, he was more so doing a lot of singles for different artists. So you could be doing a lot of different hits for different artists or some like uh, Hit Boy, who was nominated last year, who's been doing entire Nas projects. And I expect him to be nominated next year for King's Disease 3. But you have producers who will produce an entire album. Uh, Jack Antonoff does a lot of that. And then others, again, more so do a lot of singles for different artists and don't produce an entire album. Like uh, Boy Wonder in this case for this year, he did Heated by Beyonce from that Renaissance album. He produced Kendrick Lamar's N95. So he also, like Dahi, produced on Kendrick Lamar's uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Uh, Dahi, by the way, his early hits were um, 
I don't up with you by uh, Big Sean and uh, featuring E40. He also produced uh, Worst Behavior uh, by Drake from the Nothing Was The Same album. He also produced uh, one of my favorite Big Crit projects. Not the whole project, but he did like the song Catalactica, which was the title track on that album. He did uh, Schoolboy Q's Hell of a Night from 2014. He did uh, Mac Miller's Self Care. So yeah, Dahi's been doing his thing. But yeah, this year, he is mostly being nominated for that work that he did on Kendrick Lamar's album, including the songs uh, Die Hard, Count Me Out, uh, Rich Spirit. He also did Vince Staples' song uh, DJ Quick from Vince Staples' latest album, Ramona Park Broke My Heart. Uh, he also did a couple songs on Grammy Award nominated Steve Lacey's new album, Gemini Rights. That was a really popular album and Steve Lacey is up for a few awards. I think his song Bad Habit is up for both of the, you know, song of the year and record of the year. Now, Dahi didn't produce that one, but he did produce Steve Lacey's Buttons and the song Mercury. Now, Dan Arbach from the Black Keys, he does produce entire albums. And he's actually, over the past few years, mostly been producing in-house. He's got a label called Easy Eye Sound. And he's got several different artists. He's got Early James. He's got Marcus King, uh, Robert Finley. He's got a very good artist named Yola. Listen to her if you haven't. Yola is a fantastic recording artist. Kind of a soul, but a uh, kind of a bluesy soul sound. Excellent artist, Yola. But yeah, she's on Easy Eye Sound too. So those are the types of projects that Dan Arbach of the Black Keys has been taking on lately. Even though the Black Keys did just drop an album over the past year called Dropout Boogie. And Dan Arbach produced that as well. So he's uh, nominated for that. Uh, the the Velveteers album. Uh, the Hank Williams Jr. album. Uh, like I mentioned, Marcus King, Ceramic Animal. So he's been doing entire projects. That's why he's nominated here. And Dan Arbach is actually a former winner in this category as well. He won back in 2013 and he's been nominated in this category four times as has current winner Jack Antonoff and I mentioned that he produces for Taylor Swift. Well, he did her Midnight's album just a few months ago but he's not nominated this year for that because that album was released after the, uh, the cutoff, the deadline. So I expect him to actually be nominated once again next year for the work that he did on Taylor Swift's album. And I expect Taylor Swift's album, Midnight's, to probably be up for album of the year. Just a hunch. But this year, Jack Antonoff is actually being nominated for doing a song from Taylor Swift's re-release of one of her older records, Red, because you know Taylor Swift is re-recording all of her albums, or at least that's the mission. She's already done a couple because Scooter Braun, her former agent, bought her catalog from her record label. Well, one of these new album or re-releases or re-recordings, you know, she's not just re-releasing the album, she's actually going back and re-recording the albums. So one of the songs that she did was a 10 minute version of the song All Too Well. And Jack Antonoff produced that as he produced the uh, the Dance Fever album from Florence and the Machine. So he produced that entire album. He also did a, a soundtrack for Minions, The Rise of Groot. He produced that entire album. He produced the song Part of the Band by the 1975. He produced a comeback song from Diana Ross, a song called I Still Believe. So those are what he's nominated for this year. Not the Midnight's album from Taylor Swift. But who do I think should win and who will win? You know, again, I was advocating for Jack Antonoff winning one of these uh, for a few years now. I thought he was deserving of it. But I don't think that his body of work this year merits a win over the other four nominees. I, I think that this really... And Dan Arbach, I, I he produces some excellent music. His label puts out nothing but high quality stuff. And I would urge everybody to listen to those albums that are on Easy Eye Sound. I just don't think he's gonna be given a win for the production that he did in-house, including the Black Keys Project. But I don't think that the Recording Academy is gonna reward him over the others for recording for artists that most casual music fans probably haven't heard of, aside from a couple like Dan Arbach's own band, The Black Keys. So I think that this one is gonna come down to Boy Wonder, Dahi, and D-Mile. D-Mile, again, he produced uh, An Evening with Silk Sonic, and Silk Sonic took home a lot of Grammys last year. So there's a, there's a decent chance D-Mile will win it this year. I, however, 
tend to think that Dahi's participation on Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, as well as his produced songs for Steve Lacey, are gonna give him the win here because it's also like a genre mix. Kendrick Lamar making, you know, hip hop music and then Steve Lacey being more of that alternative R&B fusion music. Or, I mean, funky is jazzy. I mean, it's pretty multi-genre in itself. I mean, Steve Lacey's a serious musician. But I think that the versatility might give DJ Dahi or Dahi the edge over Boy Wonder. So I would like to see Dahi win it this year. As much as I look at Boy Wonder's track record as well, by the way. But as much as I like Boy Wonder's entire body of work, I think that DJ Dahi or Dahi should win it this year. However, I think that Boy Wonder is going to come away with the win. And if it's not Boy Wonder, I have a feeling they might give it to Jack Antonoff a second year in a row. But I think that there's a higher likelihood that Boy Wonder walks away with it. Again, he produced Beyonce's Heated and the very popular N95 on Kench Lamar's album. Not to mention Jack Harlow's Nail Tech and Jack Harlow featuring Drake, Churchill Downs. So I think that that multitude of very popular artists, even though Drake doesn't submit his own music to the Recording Academy for consideration, it's kind of just been Drake's thing to essentially boycott the Grammys. The Weeknd did it as well this year, and I think that The Weeknd would have probably been nominated all over the place if he did submit his music. But yeah, I want to see DJ Dahi or Dahi win it, but I think it's gonna go to Boy Wonder. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you love music like I do. I'm Woog, thanks for tuning in.